This video is Active Shooter in Healthcare. Dealing with workplace violence with guns versus no guns. When someone barges into your unit with a gun, your regular engage and de-escalate techniques need to be thrown out of the window. In fact, the recommended steps to survive a madman with a gun, run, hide, fight, is a total 180 turn from all of your MAB or management of aggressive behavior and even your takedown techniques. So let's go over them. Number one recommended technique to survive an active shooter is to run. Not just run, but run zigzag. Especially in hallways and empty spaces, it's harder to target and shoot you. But before you run, pause for five to 10 microseconds by checking a pulse before CPR to do lightning planning, where the exits are and how to get there without being shot. Now the science of gunfire is tricky. If you hear it coming from the right, it could really be coming from the left. Verify with your eyes, not your ears. Drop all of your stuff that would slow you down. Your designer bags, your bulky clipboards, except your cell phone, because you're gonna need that. This running reaction is a huge departure from your standing de-escalation MAB techniques. For example, MAB requires you to keep the patients plus the aggressor safe. In dealing with people with guns, you can encourage people to follow you to safety. If they're unable or if they refuse, you keep on running. Why? Forensic profile of these shooters, males with severe antisocial behaviors, have only one thing in common. They want to kill and they want to kill a lot. So you cannot be with the herd. If you congregate with others, it will make you and them vulnerable. So spread out. Let's move on to number two the recommended MO to survive an active shooter. Number two is to hide. In your normal management of aggressors without guns, the best practice are use body language, don't use trigger words to make sure you engage the aggressors and hopefully calm them down with your reassuring presence. If people are actively shooting at you, you need to hide. As in the less they see you, the better. Not only hide, but choose a hiding place that bullets cannot go through. Steel desks, pillars, careful with dry walls, bullets can go through them. If you're stuck in a room, barricade the doors with super heavy objects, tables, chairs, those big printers if you have them. Use a belt to loop and tighten protruding door hinges. After hiding and barricading, turn off all the lights, close all blinds and shutters, put the phone on vibrate, Text 911, don't call them. So be quiet like a mouse. Now, there's a recommended step by FEMA and anti-violence organization is that you can alert people, your people on social media. Disclaimer on this one. I don't think you can be on social media and barricading your hiding place at the same time. So I would prioritize barricading than updating your status. After hiding and barricading and the active shooter is still on your tail, the third recommended move to survive this madman is to fight. In normal de-escalation are people without guns. If you hurt the aggressor, you could be liable for assault and battery. However, if someone has a gun and is trying to shoot you, you have no legal obligation to take the bullet to be the cost of your death. So this is a time to fight back. Do it as a pack. Lightning plan how to take the gunman down as a team. One can go for the eyes. One can trip the feet. Convert items as weapons. Scissors, paperweight, fire extinguisher. By the way, you can spray the fire extinguisher to make the floor slippery and as a weapon to throw or bonk it over their head. Because this could get ugly, you need to do it aggressively and repeatedly until the gunman is down. So, ho, 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 healers and protectors, gentle protectors of human beings. If you have never stabbed or clabbered anyone in your life, this will be the day to do it. Oh, but good news though, your adrenaline will be so up, your big motor skills will be probably 10x stronger. We added a very important and probably the most neglected step. The fourth step is to recover. Since you did all the recommended steps, we know you will survive since we have all hopes for you here at Educate Simplify. However, if you do survive, welcome to the land of PTSD, post-traumatic stress disorder. Better known as, you'll be reliving this horrible experience over and over for years to come to the point it will affect your daily life. 
So do not let it get that bad. First step will be to arrange time off from work. That's a big one. Contact your health insurance to get the therapy that you need. We added here health lines for you to call and probably most helpful personally are apps. Apps that will notify you, bus you to get the mental health that you need. Thank you.